Who could forget the stunning restoration of a century-old painting of Christ performed by a local Spanish resident six years ago that resulted in one of the most widely mocked paintings of all time? It was dubbed the worst restoration in history, but ironically turned the woman who attempted to restore the original into a local celebrity, and actually tourists started flocking to this relatively unknown city where it was housed just to see this thing. Yeah, well, whether it was done intentionally to draw up some tourists or someone just royally fucked up while doing the same type of restoration, it has happened again. Yeah, history repeats itself. At the request of the parish authorities of a local church in the town of Estela, Estella, Estella, Spain. Yeah. Uh, wherever that is. A local handcrafts teacher was presented with the task of restoring a 16th century statue. I'm sure you can already guess how it ended up. Let's take a look at it. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, so that makes, like. makes perfect sense, and that's exactly what we probably expected. It's honestly not as bad as the Jesus painting, but it certainly looks dumb as hell, and local officials, they've had enough, especially since this is the second time that this has happened to a small community in Spain. <sighs> aye, aye, aye. According to reports, cultural officials have blasted the botched attempts as frightening. <laughs> We cannot tolerate more attacks on our cultural heritage, Spain's Art Conservation Association said in a statement. It shows a frightening lack of training of the kind required for this sort of job. I, I don't know, I think this might be another thing where they're like, this, this is kind of like something we don't care about. Can you, can you make it look like shit? That way we can get the same kind of tourism dollars that the other city is getting. Because yeah. it was lucrative to that other locale. I don't know if this one's gonna be as successful though. I know, once you do it twice, it's like the coolness is kind of worn yeah. off. Also, one thing I wanna say is that um, it's entirely possible that this is what that statue looked like 300 years ago. That's true. And it only looks good now because the paint was allowed to like fade and get all weathered and shit. Yeah. Um, because another thing, a lot of people don't realize this, but all those cool statues in Greece and in Rome, those marble white statues, those used to be painted and they looked like shit. Yes. But the paint fell off over the course of 2000 years. And like now, a cocoon. Yeah. And a beautiful butterfly emerged. Yeah, and now they look, they're just white and they look cool and we just assume that's what they're supposed to look like. It's not. Yeah. But speaking of white things that don't look cool, ah. with TanaCon out of the way, we almost forgot to talk about another white woman who now rests comfortably in the meme hall of fame right next to Barbecue Becky. And her name is Permit Patty. <laughs> Collect them all. <laughs> They're like the new garbage pail kids. <laughs> it's Permit Patty. If for some reason you weren't aware of Barbecue Becky, which I'm sure you are, that was the name given to Jennifer Schultz of Oakland, who was caught on camera while calling uh, the police to report of a group of black people who were having a cookout in a park in Oakland. Yes, they're barbecuing. I'm pretty sure it's illegal. <laughs> yeah, so the hilarious image of uh, Barbecue Becky on her little phone tattling on some fellow adults for barbecuing started to really spread once it was shown next to an older meme of the black guy on the phone, which was typically used to express someone calling to report someone over something trivial and stupid. Yeah. Essentially, being a narc. Mm -hmm. Images spread very quickly on social media where people were mostly adding her into images from throughout black entertainment and history in America. There was also a bit stranger though than uh, it could have been because it happened in Northern California, which is, uh, I mean, usually, you know, one of the most progressive liberal leftist parts of the country, yeah. but uh, you know, we're not, a mo we're not a monolith here mm -hmm. in California. Luckily after Barbecue Becky though, no one who looked almost exactly the same and who lives in the same vicinity would ever be caught doing this thing again, right? That would be ridiculous. Well, you're wrong. Again, history repeats itself. This is Permit Patty, real name Allison Edel, who apparently also, at least from the same area, they're saying from, she's from Oakland as well, but uh, this happened in San Francisco. She was made famous over the weekend after she was caught on camera calling police to report an eight-year-old black girl for selling bottled water on the street without a permit. Wow, what a superhero. Really cleaning up the streets and keeping people safe. Thanks, Permit Patty. Ugh. Now her side of the story is that she was only bluffing about calling the police uh, in order to frighten this child and her relatives. Whatever. Uh, apparently she instead was actually calling the building security. And she does realize that what she was doing was stupid in retrospect. That's so pretty easy to do after the fact once the, the whole internet has uh, roasted you. But yeah. Okay. Anyways, adding a bit of weird irony to the whole thing is the fact that Permit Patty is, or was, the CEO of a marijuana dispensary for dogs. Which is weird. But anyways, speaking of memes, 
We all know the meme that has seemingly lasted far too long, where a guy is walking with what appears to be his girlfriend while looking back at another girl who just walked past. Distracted boyfriend meme. Mm -hmm. He looks pleased. His girlfriend looks upset. It's been used in countless different ways over the past few months, and the people from the original stock photo have become unexpected celebrities because of it. And much like almost every single other person who has become an inadvertent meme thanks to stock photos, there's a whole lot more out there of the emotionally expressive girlfriend. Yeah, so to explain a little bit more, these stock photo actors, they usually get paid an extremely small amount of money to oppose for sometimes what ends up being hundreds of photos, which are then hosted on stock photo sites just in case someone types in the exact emotion setting or any other tag that would bring them to something specific. I mean, it's, it's great. Yeah, uh, very useful. It's also, <laughs> It's usually done on the cheap in the less wealthy parts of Europe. Yes. You, you've seen that old guy named Harold in so many scenarios. I can't remember where he's from. It's like Slovakia or some shit. Yeah. Uh, he's an old man, so the photographer's like, hey, let's take a billion photos of you doing old man stuff in case any number of companies need something specific. Also, smile, I guess? <laughs> That's what it looks okay, like. Okay, good mm -hmm. enough. Well, the girl from the girlfriend meme is apparently really, really good at expressing shocked emotion because her catalog is huge. Uh, this is all thanks to a Twitter user who discovered this. He's also a tech writer named Ernie Smith. He backtraced the stock <laughs> photo girl and uncovered a treasure trove of photos where she has mastered the look of shock. Over and over and over again, she is having her goddamn mind blown by whatever the hell is showing up on her phone or computer, which this will no doubt spawn even more memes based around this woman who probably just got like a hundred bucks or so for a day or two of posing for photos. I can't believe we haven't accidentally used one of her shocked faces in a thumbnail before, because they're perfect. Yeah, I'm well, always looking for shocked faces. This is the day, I guess. She opened up Twitter today and had the same reaction. Go! <laughs> Go! Uh, listen, she could one day even eclipse Harold as the new reigning king of stock photo memory. Just gotta keep it, get out there and put in some more work. Yeah. Another couple day rates and she's solidified. Yeah, but speaking of stupid shit that makes no sense, but is still a nice distraction from the soul crushing reality that many of us wake up to every day. Hey look, it's something new to make fun of, woo! Yeah. Selfie art installations have become more and more prevalent over the years with the trend getting so big that there are now traveling selfie museums which are just vibrant art installations where you can take cool photos that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Look, I'm in a giant pool filled with sprinkles or jimmies as the people from Pennsylvania call them. They're called jimmies. Anyway, probably the most famous street art selfie locations started around 2012 with Colette Miller's Angel Wings installations. Apparently these things are all across the globe. Uh, we've definitely seen them here in Los Angeles. There's multiple places if where you stand these... in front of it, it's like you have angel wings. Mm -hmm. I am the angel. Uh, if you haven't seen them in real life, then you might at least follow someone on Instagram who's taken a photo in front of them. Chances are they have. Regardless, it's just the best example that we have of to give you of a street art selfie installation. But now, there's another one. This one though, it's exclusive. Yeah, keeping with the stupid LA vibe of having everything be exclusively available to only influencers, which basically everyone in LA who's 25 years old or younger thinks that they are, uh, there's now an exclusive selfie spot in Los Angeles. And from the looks of it, it kind of just seems to be a complete ripoff of the angel wings seen around the world, but with a verified check mark above it. That way people know you're cool. Side note, I, I, I finally saw one example of someone uh, trying to get some free shit for her like oh, Instagram yeah? cloud. It was at an escape room, the group in front of us. They, sh they booked it and then they showed up and they're like, hey, so we were hoping like we wouldn't have to pay because like I got like 5,000 followers. You saw that in real life? life? Yeah. Ooh. I was just sitting in the back just like. They also did. And the people there, they were like, no. no. <laughs> also, the uh, there was a recent uh, news article, maybe we could add it to Weekly Weird News or something, but someone apparently just bought a bunch of, speaking of stock photos, bought a bunch of stock photos of a girl traveling and travel photos and stuff like that, built an Instagram account around it, got thousands and thousands of likes and followers, and was and did an experiment where they could see if they could get discounts on hotels, and it apparently worked half the time. But back to the angel wings. This is dumb. Really, really dumb. Yeah. And apparently, you need to either be verified or have a following of 20,000 or more in order to even take a photo with it. Well, what am I doing here? Yeah. I'm gonna go take a picture in front of the wing. Yes. This mural is, of course, also guarded by a security guard who we assume has to somehow confirm that you're famous enough to enter the tented area where this dumb shit exists. Now, sure, it doesn't seem that weird to assume that this is a real thing, but what is more likely the case? 
almost certainly the case, is that this is an art installation that is commenting on shitty influencer culture and the perceived exclusivity of it all. Yeah, see that's smart. It's a self-referential meta sort of deal. Hmm. It also seems like- Maybe a, a social experiment, you might yeah. say. Yeah! Yes, hmm. No, that's not what a social- A social experiment is when you punch someone in the face. Yeah, and then mock and them. run away. Yeah. So yeah, this seems like a trap that was set in order to attract the most vain and narcissistic creatures from the surrounding area for a project that intends to mock them. And if that's the case, bravo. Also, no one's really talking about this and I could be completely off base here, but someone managed to figure out that there is some sort of show with the title, uh, what's the like title? Like fave subscribe or something? Yeah, something like that, uh, who has an Instagram account. They're the ones behind this. They have no posts yet except for the title. And, but the, the profile picture of that Instagram account looks exactly like the top half of uh, producer DJ Dylan Francis' Friend face. of the show. Friend of the show. And Dylan Francis is also a very, a pretty solid comedian in terms of uh, making videos on it. It seems like something he could absolutely be involved with. Possibly in collaboration with friend of the show, Brendan, Brendan Dermer. Dermer. Hmm. So I'm tired of predicting everything right all the time, but, but I, I think feel we like might be right we, on I this think one. we might be right about this one. Yeah, in which case, it's going to be beautiful when it's finally presented in a hole with, with all these people. You know Jake and Logan are gonna show up to this thing. Oh yeah. They're gonna be there. In the new office, we should have a whiteboard listing all the things we get right yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. But we never list the things we get wrong. No, why yeah. would we do that? No. Anyways, watch our other episodes. We just did an episode yesterday about uh, the Tana Mongoose thing or whatever uh, with her whole collapsing convention thing. It, listen, it's dumb, but that's what you're here for. The internet was a mistake. Speaking of dumb things, we're dumb and we watch anime sometimes. So check out the latest episode of Idiots Watching Anime. We're going to film another one this week, so more stuff coming soon. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye-bye.